Hi students, this is Jen from the library. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about AI, artificial intelligence, uh, specifically text-based artificial intelligence and things like ChatGPT. I'm gonna show you uh, one way that you might be able to use tools such as ChatGPT in your work without asking it to write your whole paper. Uh, the caveat I want to add, though, right at the beginning is please, before you use anything, before you, ex you know, use a tool for any reason in any class, please check with your professor. Ask if you are allowed to use AI tools. And I don't mean necessarily to write your whole essay, but even as part of the process or studying or anything that you do on your own time for the class, Technically, your professors are allowed to prohibit use of AI for any reason relating to the class. You need to check with them. That is part of their you know, rights as a professor of the class is they can set parameters and rules around any kind of tool, including AI. I wouldn't want anyone to get in trouble for using something, uh, you know, even if you thought it was okay, uh, even if you weren't using it to write your essays, please double check. Uh, with your professor, ask them specifically about using it as part of the process. Feel free to show them this video if you need to, but don't use it unless you are sure that it is okay with your professors. If it is, though, I'm going to show you how to use it to generate some keywords. So keywords are the words you use to search in a library database or even on Google. They're the terms you use to search. Keywords you want to be specific and simple. And sometimes it's really hard to come up with keywords when you're not familiar with a topic. You just don't know enough about it to know the right words to search. ChatGPT can help a little bit with that process, at least to get started. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to use the example of the ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau. All right, I can use in a library database to learn about Jacques Cousteau. I'm, oops, I spelled his name wrong. <laughs> so you'll notice I spelled it wrong up here. I forgot the S. And ChatGPT just duplicated that. And then it went off because maybe there is some other, you know, person named Jacques Cousteau. I don't want that person. I'm going to have to go back. So this is a good example of how ChatGPT doesn't really know what I want. It's, it's being very literal. I have to spell it correctly. And now it's giving me a relevant list here. So the first one, pretty obvious, just his name. You know, in oceanography and marine biology, those are some of his um, activities. Then it starts to get into things I might not have thought about. Okay, on, or environmental conservation. He was very active in that. Documentary filmmaking. Ah, I never thought about that fact that he, you know, was a biologist or marine biologist, but he was also a filmmaker. That's how, why we know about him. Uh, you know, he was involved in ocean conservation. That's interesting. Maybe that's an angle I would want to research in my essay. Uh, things like the Cousteau Society. I've never heard of that. I don't know what it is. Now, I need to double check whether that's actually true. ChatGPT does make things up. So just because you saw this Cousteau Society here does not mean that's a real thing. I would want to go to Google or a library database and see if I can find out more, make sure it is real before I count on that as a research topic. But you can see how this has given me some ideas I might not have thought of on my own. I could also, you know, prompt it again. I could ask it to redo the list. I could ask it to dig in more on one topic. Um, but for now, I'm just going to, you know, go with what I have here. And let's say I'm really interested in this documentary filmmaking aspect. I didn't think about that. So I can take that now to a library database. I'm going to go, this is on the library website. I'm going to use Academic Search Complete, which is our largest multidisciplinary database. From here, I could just type my searches right in the box, but I always recommend clicking on Advanced Search. It helps you organize your search terms a little bit more. I'm going to put his name as the first term, and then I'm going to use and, so I'm combining two terms, the first term and the second term, both need to appear. And I'm going to see what I can find. Zero results. So I didn't get anything. Now, you might think, oh, oh, there's nothing in this database. I better give up. Uh, but this is where ChatGPT can cause you a little bit of a problem. 
uh, as an expert, I know what the problem is. I can already spot it by looking at this. I think documentary filmmaking is too specific. So in because I have a lot of practice using these databases, I know I want to simplify that keyword. You might not have realized that. So if you were relying only on chat GPT, you might not have gotten very far. But if I revise it to say something like film, so that's a little bit simpler. Let's see what I can come up with now. Now I have 40 results, all relating to Jacques Cousteau and his relationship or his involvement with film. So you play around with those terms. Don't accept whatever ChatGPT gives you as the end all be all of keywords. Also get help if you need it. Come to a librarian and we can help you troubleshoot your keywords. We can help you write your own list instead of ChatGPT's or perhaps, uh, you know, improve upon ChatGPT's list. Reach out to us if you have any questions. We are able to help you use ChatGPT and or do your searching in databases and in Google as well. And this is a similar process to what you would do in another AI tool as well, like uh, Google Gemini or uh, Copilot that Microsoft has or any of the others. Uh, use it as a tool to help you get started, not as the endpoint.